Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve sallallahu ala seyyidina ve nebiyyina Muhammedin ve alihi tahirin. In irfanul ameli, the main object, the main purpose is purification of the soul for its perfection. Two concepts are here essential. One of them is zuhd, a kind of retreat from the world, detachment from anything other than God. This is important and essential for mystical journey because the main obstacle for this journey is uh, our desires our inclinations toward this worldly attractions this is the main obstacle and we have to know our self and know what is harmful for us in order to avoid and what is helpful in order to pursue. A'da adu wika nafsuka allati bayna jambayk. Our the most, uh, the worst enemy of us is our selfish desires, which uh, makes us to love what we desire attachment toward the world toward the attraction of this world Zuhd is the exercise of an exercise for the detachment from all these attractions which prevent us from uh, continuing our journey toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, uh, some mystics talk about uh, ascetic life or riyadha. Of course, this concept is also sometimes misunderstood and in a wrong way practiced. Uh, some thought that we should uh, fight with our desires and in any way and so even we should try to kill these desires in order to be free from uh, the effect of these attractions. Of course, the extreme asceticism is rejected in Islam, particularly any action which is harmful for our body is forbidden. We are not allowed to harm our body for the sake of our spiritual perfection. We don't have such an equivalence. It is based on a wrong view of the relation between this world and the hereafter, between material world and immaterial world, between human soul and body. They see these two as two opposite poles, while they are not. Our body and soul are not uh, in the opposite pole. Rather, our body is important for our perfection too. Therefore, we should not harm our body. And these desires 
are also are not uh, wrong and should not fight with our desires. Rather, what we should do is to modify them, to correct ourselves and to put them in the right direction. Uh, no desire by itself is evil. What is evil is to go to extreme and to go out of, to use the, our desires and potentialities and faculties in a wrong way. And this is the purpose of education to modify and to correct, not to destroy these desires. Therefore, some act of asceticism which is helpful in this regard is uh, encouraged in religion. For example, fast. In fast, we exercise our resistance toward our desires. When we are thirsty, we like to drink water. When we are hungry, we like to eat food, and so on. In fast, we try to resist, but to the extent that it does not lead to harmness, even if it leads to a major harm in our body, then it is not allowed. We should not uh, have fast. So it is to strengthen our will, not to weaken our body. The purpose is not uh, weakening the body. It's to is strengthening the soul, the will. And there is no contradiction between soul and body. They must be, and the ideal is that they both must be in the same life, in the same line, in a harmonious way. And this is the purpose of Zohd. Therefore, Zohd is important, exercise of detachment from the whatever other than God, retreat from the world in a moderate way and in temporary uh, for this exercise, for this inqata and for this detachment. The purpose is to learn, to exercise, to practice, not to be the slave of our desires, rather to be the owner of our desires. When we are the owner of our desires, not the slave of our desires, we are in a right track toward perfection. So this is the first element, which is Zod. The second element, uh, correct our relation with regard to God. The second element is love, our love of God, hope. Al-Hubbulillahi. So this hope also has the same function when we love God, when we concentrate on our love of God, and God becomes the only beloved, therefore the same detachment from the world will be achieved. So the more this love is strong and intensive, uh, the more be our detachment from the world. Of course, love is not only a means for a goal. Rather, it is itself the goal, our love of God. It is different from Zohd and asceticism. That's just a mean, not a goal. So it is not essential, as love is essential. 
this is our relation to God, who is the beloved, the only beloved and the absolute beloved. And as I mentioned before, this does not exclude the love of the world, but corrects it. When we love God, we love everything because everything belongs to God. Everything is created by God. Everything is God's manifestation. But this love is different from love of the world itself, by itself. This is rejected. This is hubbud dunya, which is blamed. Hubbud dunya is a kind of love that one has with regard to the world in which God is not present. God is absent. But in affirmative love, the main and the real object of love is God. First, our love belongs to God. Through God, we love the world, not independently. So our love of God implies our love of the world. But if we love the world independently, without its relation to God, this is an obstacle in our way toward God. So as I mentioned, our love is our response toward God's love. Who loves us? We love him. يحبهم ويحبونا. Of course, in a sense, God loves the whole world and everything and everyone because everything is created by God. Everything is God's manifestation. When God loves himself, he necessarily loves everything that belongs to him. If he wouldn't love something, he wouldn't create. But this is the general love, al-hubb al-am, as we have al-rahmat al-am, rahmat al-rahmaniya. But the specific love is al-hubb al-khas is not uh, all-inclusive, depends on uh, some conditions, which is mentioned in the Qur'an. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. The Prophet says, Qur'an says, in behalf of the Prophet, that if you love God, follow me then God will love you. So following the Prophet is the condition for God to love us. So this love is not absolute. It's conditioned. We have, we play our role in achieving this particular love of God. فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. If we follow Prophet, if it means if we follow God, because Prophet, what he says is the command of God. So if we follow God, if we obey God, then God will love us. This is the special love, particular love. And this love of God leads to salvation. The first general love leads to creation. But not necessarily to salvation. Salvation for a human being has related to his free choice. It's freedom of will. So we play a role in our salvation. Even though the cause and the agent of salvation is God, but we also play our role in this regard. 
what we can do is obedience. This obedience leads to the love of God, which is ultimate happiness, ultimate salvation. So this Zohd and love are two ways, uh, two wings that we can fly toward perfection, toward God, toward nearness to God, proximity to God. But the ultimate achievement is ma'rifah. Ma'rifatullah. Ma khalaqtul jinn wal ins illa liya'budun. I didn't create jinn and human being except for worshipping. So this obedience, because this obedience is the condition and necessary element for human perfection. And in some hadith it is interpreted لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ لِيَعْرِفُونَ In order to know God. مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ Which is the higher, highest stages of perfection. Coming to yaqeen. Because iman leads to perfection. Iman leads to salvation. In al insan al fi khusr illa ladina amanu wa amalu salihat. This iman based on ma'rifa, on knowledge. And the perfect iman is associated with yaqeen, certainty. So coming to certainty is a precious goal in Irfan, Irfan al Amali, al Yaqeen, al Yaqeen fi Qalbi, Allahumma jal al Yaqeen fi Qalbi. In prayer, we ask God to give us this certainty. This certainty is the peak of Iman, faith. Urafa divided in this certainty into three stages. Ilmul Yaqeen, the knowledge of certainty. Aynul Yaqeen, the vision of certainty. And Haqqul Yaqeen, the essence of certainty. Of course, these terms are derived from the Holy Quran. But uh, mystic Urafa give their own interpretation and understanding of these terms. Ilm al the knowledge of certainty, is the first step. The knowledge that we can acquire through ordinary ways, through demonstration, through philosophical and theological uh, and discursive thought. Ayn al the vision of certainty, cannot be achieved except through purification of heart. Except through tahdeeb nafs This is intuitive knowledge, not discursive knowledge. And beyond this is uh, the essence of certainty, haqqul yaqeen. According to the explanation that Orafa gives, in ilm aynul yaqeen, again duality exists. The servant sees himself and God, I and you. But in Haqqul Yaqeen, which is the state of fana, annihilation, one does not see himself. One does not see himself, only see God, as if he is annihilated in God and united with God. So this is, of course, understood in different ways, uh, which uh, in, uh, in some of these interpretations, some of these understandings are controversial. But what we can say, 
uh, it is safe to say is that it is the stages that one see only God and his focus is on God and this is the highest stages of certainty and Iman. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.